Windows sucks. You should use Linux. Windows 11 is garbage. Don't even try it. These are all rando comments that we tend to get on every video as people try to force you to use whatever it is that they're using. Well, I'm going to show you how you can try any operating system without removing your current Windows to see what works for you and without losing your data. Okay, so this happens in two stages. The first stage is to create a virtual machine or a VM as the cool kids say. And a virtual machine is basically just software. It creates a separate computer inside your main computer. Because it acts like a new computer, you can run anything that you would on a new computer, like installing a new operating system. Now, I'm going to show you two popular free VM software. The first one is Oracle VM VirtualBox, and the second one is the VM Workstation Player. As long as you're using it for non-commercial usage, both of them are completely free. I have links to these in the description in the video to make sure you get the right ones. Now, there are some differences between the two, but for the purposes of what we're trying to do, which is just to try a new operating system, they're virtually the same. And you know the drill, you click on the download button, you follow the next, next, next little wizard, and just like that, you've just passed stage number one. You have the VM software ready to go. So with that in mind, on to stage number two. And that is where we get the installation file of whatever operating system we want to install. I'm not only gonna show you both VM software, but I'm also gonna do an installation of Windows 11 and an installation of Linux. So you get to see everything. So let's start with Windows 11, grab that installation file, and this is how you do that. Alrighty, let's grab the file. So go into Google, type Windows 11 download, and you should come to the Microsoft website. Now, the first thing you need to do is to run the PC health check to make sure your computer has the minimum requirements. If yours doesn't, there are ways to get around that. Let me know if you want to see a video about that. Scroll down on that particular page until you see the Windows 11 ISO image. And this option is for users that want to create a bootable installation media or create a virtual machine. It's exactly what we are doing right now. So from the drop down, select Windows 11, click on download. Then it's going to ask you to select your region. In my case, I'm choosing English, United States. Click on confirm. And there it is. Download the 64 bit. It's going to save the ISO file somewhere on your computer. Make sure you know where that is. OK, now that you've got that, it all comes together. Let's open up the VM software and let's install it. All right, let's fire up the VM Workstation 17 player. That's the one we're going to start with. I'll show you the other utility later. But right here, you can see I've got a whole bunch of other virtual machines that I've already created. But let's go and create our new one. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Create New Virtual Machine. And we'll take you step by step through this. So don't panic. What we're looking for is the installer. So click on the installer, the ISO file. Remember that file we downloaded, the Windows 11 ISO? We want to find it on our computer, click on it, and it will say, hey, this is a Windows 11. It automatically detects it. That's great. Click on Next. Then it's going to say, let's give it a name. What's the virtual machine name? This is for your reference, so you can refer back to it. You can see in the background, I have Mint, I have Windows 10, I've got Kali Linux as well. All right, on the next screen, it needs to have the encrypted trusted platform modules in order to operate. TPM is one of those requirements for Windows 11, and this allows you to do that right here. Because remember, virtual machine is like a brand new hardware within a computer. So we have the TPM enabled, we're going to give it a password, and then we're going to click on next. Right here, it's going to say, look, on your hard drive, how much space you want to allocate for this virtual machine. Now, I will say for Windows 11, it recommends around 50 to 60 gigs. I don't want to give it that much because I don't have that much free space on this particular machine. So I'm just going to make this 20 just so we can show you the installation process. Of course, the more you have that you can do these updates, you can install more applications. And the next up, do you want to store it in a single file or multiple files? Now, multiple files is great if we're moving it from computer to computer. But remember, we're just going to try this new operating system. We're not planning on moving it around. So I'm going to store it on one file. And then on the screen, well, we want to click on Customize Hardware. And this is where virtual machines get really, really cool and really, really geeky. 
This says, hey, I've allocated four gigs of RAM, of memory, to this virtual machine. And we know that four gigs is never going to be enough for Windows 11, so we're going to bump it up to 16. Now, on the right-hand side, it's going to give you the minimum requirements, it's going to give you the recommended. Remember, this is working within the environment that you have. So if your machine only has 8 gigs, you can't give this 16 gigs, otherwise it's not going to work. So bump it up to as high as you can while still recognizing that your machine still needs to work whilst this works. So 16, 8, those should be perfectly fine. Okay, now that we've done that, let's click on finished and then we're pretty much ready to rock and roll. Now we let it run, it creates the virtual environment, it then boots off that ISO, that file that we have, giving us the installation files like we're installing this on a new computer. And here I'm going to choose a custom installation. Now look at this, this says I have got 20 gigs to play with because that's the 20 gigs that we gave it originally. Now people normally freak out because they think they're going to erase their entire computer it doesn't, it only can work in the space that you've allocated in the virtual machine. And here it just makes a little note saying, hey, for Windows 11, we kind of need 50 gigs, but I'm ignoring that. We're just trying to experiment with this operating system to see if we actually like it. Okay, let this thing carry on. I'm gonna kind of let it do its thing. I'm just wanna zoom out to show you that this is working in a virtual machine. My Windows 10 is underneath that. There is my Windows 11 installation. I'm speeding through it. And there we go. You now have Windows 11, running inside Windows 10, and it doesn't touch your data. It's completely separate. In fact, let me just zoom in quickly, go into my documents here on my Windows 11, no pictures, no documents, no music, no videos, completely separate from my main machine, so there's no harm in playing around, and when I'm ready to shut it down, click on player, click on power, click on shutdown guest, or you can just go into Windows 11 and do the normal shutdown as you would any computer. <laughs> okay, that was pretty awesome. Now, I'm going to show you how to do a Linux installation. And yes, we can use the VM Workstation Player to do that. But instead, I am going to do that on the virtual box. So this way, you get to see Windows 11, you get to see Linux, you get to see both VM platforms. Let's grab the ISO file for Linux. All right, let's install Ubuntu. So I'm going to do a quick Google search for Ubuntu, click on the download button, and look at that, it's an ISO file, which is exactly what we did before. Let's save it to our computer and let's fire it up. But this time we're going to use the VM VirtualBox by Oracle, and we're going to click on new, and it's pretty much the same process as we did before. We have to give it a name, we have to select the ISO file. We're going to choose the ISO for Ubuntu this time. There's my all my ISOs I've downloaded. Let's look for the Ubuntu one. Let's click on that. And it's already identifies it as Linux and it's got the version name as Ubuntu. Right under hardware is where we change our base memory like we did before. We're going to bump this up to 16, which is a nice for Linux to have so much memory. And let's go onto the hard drive. And then here's where you can choose to allocate how much space you want to give this virtual machine. Okay, smash that finish button and then it will basically start to load. And there we go, the Ubuntu installation is happening right now. I'm gonna, not gonna make you watch the entire installation, but I'm just gonna call out a couple of things here. So at a certain point it says, hey, which apps would you like to start with? The default is just a smaller version or the expanded version. I'm, because we're just playing around with this, I'm gonna choose the smaller version just so you can see what Ubuntu looks like. And on the next screen, it says, hey, you've got some proprietary software when it comes to things like graphics and hardware, like NVIDIA graphics drivers. If you've got those, install those. Download and install support for additional media format. Yes, I want that. Because I'm again, I'm just trying to get experience of what this feels like. And this screen, erase the disk and install Ubuntu. This is again where people panic. Remember, like we did before, it will only use whatever space you've allocated in your hard drive. It is not going to touch your main computer. Okay, very important. Of course, having backup is critical just in case things go horribly wrong. I have yet to see it go horribly wrong. So, but disclaimer is out there. Okay, we've spoken enough. There it is. There is Ubuntu currently running on my Windows 10 machine, completely separated from my data. And this is such a cool way to play with Linux, something that you may be afraid of and didn't want to go all in on. You can now experiment with it, see if it's for you. And if it is, then make the migration later on. Uh, one more thing before we head out is that if you don't like it and you want to remove it from your hard drive, 
All you're going to do is go to your virtual software, right click on it, click on remove, and then it will actually say, do you want to keep the file and just remove it from your list? No, we want to delete all the files. We want to reclaim that 20 gigs that we've allocated to the virtual machine. We want to claim it back to our hard drive. And there it is. It's gone. Windows 10 hasn't been touched. Everything still works as normal. VMs are awesome. You get to experiment without having to commit until you're ready. And without having to worry about dual boot and rebooting and playing into the BIOS and doing all these weird and wonderful stuff. It's just there on your desktop, ready for you to use at a moment's notice. And if you are still on Windows 10, now is the perfect time to see other operating systems because Windows 10 is coming to an end in 2025. What does this mean for you? Well, check out this video right over here, but give the video a quick thumbs up before you head out and I'll see you in this video. Let's go.